Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColeen.com. Alright, so let's make a shift here. So last night um, I called GoDaddy. Uh, GoDaddy is, they host my domains for my website and just domains that I keep on the side. So I had a little issue with my website. I got a little warning sign that said, hey, contact GoDaddy to take care of this. So I basically saved a young lady's life last night. So I call up GoDaddy, get this young lady, uh, she's over there in the Philippines, speaks pretty much 90% perfect English, and so there's a very good understanding between us. So I noticed right off the bat she was not very responsive, she answers slowly, and I first thought, well, maybe she's tired and mellow, and I just kind of tuned in, something just didn't feel right. So I kind of got really tuned in and I was really patient and really paying attention to her responses and there was just something in my gut telling me something's just not right, something's not going right here, okay? So I was really patient, really calm, very kind with her. I would also imagine if she got another customer that didn't have this level of being tuned in, compassion, etc., that they would have yelled at her like, hey, you know, answer the question, what's going on? Like, and really kind of beat her down. I kind of have a feeling that's what that job can tend to be like. You guys may not realize it, but if you've been following my videos for the last few months on a fairly consistent basis, you've actually been getting trained. So what's happening is what you're learning from me is you will share with other people even if you have no plans on doing it. It's going to come out in the middle of conversations. You're going to hear something, someone say something, and you're going to share something <clears throat> that you've learned from me, probably from other channels as well. And it will make a huge, huge difference in their life. And you're going to see it right in front of your eyes. All right, so I have to share this before I get back to that story. <clears throat> so somewhere around, I would say, oh, probably around June 19th, June 20th, something like that, I prayed to God and I said, show me the way, show me which direction you want me to go in. Because my passion, my love is in my dating relationship coaching. I made a brand new discovery, a series of discoveries that opened up a, just a box of other discoveries and that business has really been challenged the last three years since the lockdown and I said God just make it so obvious that even I can't miss it and as you go back to June 24th all of a sudden I got 420 views on a video and I was like holy shit like normally I get like 30 or 20 and it usually takes a month to even get 50 or whatever and all of a sudden I've got 314 a thousand 1200 868 and then we go a little bit further we go back there and we have a thousand five thousand eight forty eight I mean the numbers are just jumping through the roof so as I'm making this video I'm having some realizations that this this is exactly where I'm supposed to be right now I also want to thank you guys for making really positive comments on my channel it Trust me, it makes a difference because I've been making videos for years and years and it was just like no responses or very little, one here, one there. And you guys have no idea how much you guys have shifted me in my life and my enthusiasm towards this channel. I basically just prayed to God and something, okay, I'm going to say something right now. I started making videos and I I don't make any notes. I just, a subject pops up, something hits my heart. And I just turn on the recorder and I just go. I wanted to say this a while back, but around July, I think it was 13th or 14th. Let me take a quick look. Yeah, um, I made some videos and everything just came out perfectly. It was the most incredible thing. Not only did they come out perfectly, but while I was making the videos, I was having these realizations about narcissists and what to do and how to deal with it. It was just popping up. And at the very end of the videos, I've noticed from that point forward, it was like the pieces of the puzzle just came together. And at the very 
last two, three minutes, it's like that was what the intention was all about without me even knowing it. All right, so let's get back to this young lady. All right. So I call GoDaddy and I'm talking to this young lady and I very much, my intuition was picking up on something like, hey, something is not right here. You've got to be patient with this girl. You've got to be compassionate. You've got to, to get her into a conversation. So we just started talking about stuff. She's kind of asked me questions about my business because they, they basically pull up your website. We were trying to make sure everything was working right. And she's like, wow, you're a dating relationship coach. I'm like, yeah. And so I forget what she said or how we led down this path, but she said, yeah, I, I don't think, I don't see myself ever getting into a relationship again. And right there, I was like, yep, narcissist abuse, 100%. So I knew she needed help and I knew I couldn't just dive into narcissist abuse. So I basically had shared with her some of my experiences in the past where I, I got hurt really bad. And so, because you got to understand, she's hearing this very positive, uplifted guy thinking this guy just couldn't understand. So I had to share with her some real life events in my life. And I then eventually started sharing with her stories about what gaslighting is and backstabbing and how they lie about you. And she just said, and she just burst out in tears and she's crying. And I kept going with all these different tactics that narcissists use on you. And how they belittle you and cut you down and they, they rip you to shreds and, you know, all this stuff. And she's just bawling. She is just, but it was a good kind of crying. It was like a release. So I eventually asked her, I said, am I making you cry? And she just, in a, very much sobbing, she's like, yes, you're making me cry. And I said, but it's a good kind of cry, isn't it? She's like, yes. And she was just releasing all these emotions. And I said, these people that you've dated in the past made you feel like it was all your fart fault, didn't they? She said, yes. It's, I go, and you somehow felt like you were responsible. And you, you must have done something wrong. She's like, that's how I always feel. And so I basically started teaching about what narcissist was abused, narcissist abuse was, and how to recognize it. And we spoke for about an hour. And yes, I did give her my YouTube channel. I said, you really need to follow it. There's a lot of people that it's helping people to heal and to overcome their issues. I'm going to bring something up that a lot of you guys have the same issue with. It is important to hear this because it's what narcissists want you to do and you don't even realize it and you're, and you're in that situation. So one thing I want to recommend is for you, if you talk to someone who you realize has been dealing with narcissist abuse and they're, they're just destroyed, their soul is ripped out, recommend my channel. Have them come to the channel. It's free, no charge, and it's, it'll help them a lot, as I'm sure you already know. So here's the issue. The issue is this. It's what she said, because a couple of you have already, already messaged me on here in, my, in the boxes below here where you can leave, you know, write stuff down and said, oh, well, you know, that's not what I'm going to do. So here's what she said. I forget exactly how we're talking about it, but it's about my dating relationship coaching business. She said something to the effect like, yeah, I don't see myself ever getting into a relationship ever again. This girl was damaged. I could tell from the beginning of the conversation. And it wasn't like she was just having a bad day. You could tell, like a lot of you, you know how you went to the narcissist abuse and you were just like, like, beyond sad like you were just in this dark place and you just had no enthusiasm no energy no happiness no joy and you could tell like she's been there for a while so i obviously what i did with her i started teaching her about it and i helped her brain to make a shift and make not a shift but multiple shifts on perspectives on seeing things from a different angle from a bet from a better light okay now, I could still understand, I still had this sense that it, she was feeling a lot better. Her voice had lightened up. She was breathing heavy in a good way. And I realized she still was lost on this one thing. And this was where a lot of you are. So this is what it is. So I said to her, I said, you still are afraid to get into a relationship, aren't you? She's like, yeah, honestly, I, I don't see how I could do that. And I said, I'll tell you why. 
because narcissists do this thing called love bombing. So what happens is you just feel elated, you feel great. It's exactly like when you meet someone that you're compatible with and, when, and you're in love with. She goes, yeah. And I explained the love bombing and the devaluing phase and you know all that stuff when they throw you away and then Hoover and all that stuff. She goes, yeah, that's exactly what I did. So the more I explained to her what narcissists do, the cycles they take you through, she was just like, wow. Like she, cause it's like, because she felt all alone. She did, no one around her understood her. Her friends couldn't understand her. They looked at her like, you're crazy. Like why would some, you know, I'm, it's funny. Cause someone actually said to me like, why, like, why would someone do that to, to, to someone that doesn't make sense. In fact, this person said, sounds like that person does a lot of cocaine. I'm like, what are you talking about? So I've never done cocaine. So I have no idea how it affects you like I don't get it so I'm like what are you talking about so th my point being is like the people around this young lady just couldn't couldn't relate so this young lady I think she was about 27 20 years old was basically just she might have been younger but just devastated like because you know her whole dream is to get married to have kids you know all that that stuff right so here she is just thinking her whole future is just gone all right, so I'm trying to find a good way to put this out there. So I'm going to stumble and bumble, but I'm just going to kind of shove it out there right now and explain it. So I said to her, I go, so I explained the love bombing phase and then the devaluing phase. And that's when they rip your heart and soul out. And then what ends up happening is you become terrified of people that are actually good, loving, kind people because you're like, you're because here's what happens. Your emotional nervous system, your emotional body starts to meet someone else and they're nice to you and they pay for dinner and they do these nice things which is what happens when someone meets you and they really love you and they're really attracted to you not only physically but emotionally is they do nice things for you that's a very normal part of love and connecting with someone so what happens is because she had been hurt multiple times by m more than one person she started to relate and or connect. Wait a minute. This is that same thing that happened with this other person. Now at the time until she talked to me last night, she never even heard of what she might have heard the word narcissist, but she had no clue what it really meant until I broke it down. So what I said to her was you when you start to meet nice people that are kind to you and they buy you dinner or they do kind things for you now you're starting to look at them like oh shit this is exactly what happened when I was with that other person and the guy before that and the guy before that and it ended up being an absolute nightmare and it was the most evil satanic thing I'd ever been through and she starts crying she's like that's what it is I don't know who to trust. And that's what you guys went through too, didn't you? There is good news. There is an end game. I'm going to say it again. I put it in one or two other videos. There's two end games here. And this is going to be the most beautiful thing that you've ever heard. I bet. I think I'm going to say it better now than I said in the other video, which was actually, I think called like there's an end game here or something like that. So here's what it is. Number one, what I said to her is like, look, there are good people out there. Now she knows this because she's talking to me going, man, all this guy has done is spend his time teaching me stuff for free, giving, helping. And another thing that I was doing is something I do with my heart energy to help her to feel love, to help her to begin to heal. So here's what it is. You will eventually be able to see hear and feel and know the difference between good people and bad people okay you'll see it and a lot of you who've been on this channel for a few months and, uh, and watching other videos you are already seeing it you're just not quite confident with it yet but you're already there you might have a little bit of tuning to do here and here and there but for essentially you're just there you just need to kind of start interacting with people again you're gonna get better and better at dealing with it. So not only recognizing it faster, but you're gonna be like, no, you're gonna say no at the drop of a hat. You're gonna be like, no, I don't care. Get out of here. You're gonna start calling them creepy. Like one of the words I call them is like, I call them Mr. Creepy or Creepo, you know, stuff. I like, I don't care. If someone is gonna be that vicious and vile and mean to me for no reason, other than I was kind and compassionate to them, yeah, they're gonna get it. Now here's the really cool thing. When you become stronger and you can stand up for yourself a lot faster, a lot better, a lot more assertive, 
you become a much more loving and compassionate person towards the good people. And you also realize, I don't have to be loving and kind and compassionate towards evil beings. And that's why I've made a lot of videos to say, look, when, when in the book of Matthew, when he was saying this, he didn't mean to be this way towards demonic entities, demonic beings. He meant forgive people that are kind, that are good, people that have treated you well, because none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. That does not mean to let a narcissist destroy your entire life and keep coming back and attacking, 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 attacking. No, that that is not what Matthew or any of them were talking about. Not even Jesus. See, the narcissist through, throughout the decades, centuries, thousands of years has been twisting a lot of these teachings. I'll tell you right now, Jesus would in a heartbeat be like, this person or this being keeps coming back and they're purposely ripping you to shreds. Get away from them. Block them. Walk away. Do not deal with those people. I guarantee. Okay, let, okay, let me ask you a question. Do you honestly think God's like, hey, you know what? You want to go and hang out with Satan and drink some beer and have a good time? Hey, go ahead. I'm so, I'm supportive. No, God, Jesus, Buddha, whoever you believe in, they're going to be like, no, get away from them. So when people come onto my channel, it's like, oh, you got to forgive them. You know, you've got to just love your enemy, blah, blah, blah. They're not talking about demonic entities, okay? That, you let the angels and God's warriors deal with that, okay? They're talking about man, people with hearts, people with souls, people with emotions and an actual spirit inside them. Not an empty meat bag that's walking around destroying people. So here's what happens. You start to learn these things. You start to go, oh, I didn't know that because I was always taught to forgive and forget. Yeah, you can forgive a narcissist and what they did to you because you're letting go of that pain and emotion out of you and letting it go back, go back to them. And then you forget about them. It doesn't mean to forget what they did to you. All right, so with this young lady, I had told her, I said, look, just start watching my YouTube videos. You're going to heal. You're going through this d d dark night of the soul or whatever you want to call it. You're going through this dark space right now because you're learning about boundaries. And it's an unconscious process that your brain's doing. You're rewiring your system to protect yourself. Because narcissists have literally led empaths, light workers, whatever you want to call us, down this path of, hey, lower your shield. In fact, don't even carry a shield. Don't protect yourself. I mean, how many times have you heard a narcissist literally say, well, well why did you fight back against that person who was attacking you with a knife? Like, because uh, they were trying to kill me? Well, that's just so mean. You're a light worker. You're not supposed to fight back. Hell yes, you are supposed to protect yourself. You're supposed to protect that inner being. So long story short, there's a couple of lessons, probably more than a couple, that you have to learn about standing up for yourself, feeling totally 100% congruently fine about absolutely 100% defending yourself, right? Standing up for yourself, speaking out for yourself, etc., etc. So then what happens is, yeah, you dealt with a narcissist yesterday and you don't really give a shit. It's not devastating like it used to be because you're like, oh, I, I, I met this person at work or I met this person online and kind of hung out a few times and oh, I totally got it. They're a narcissist, so they're gone. Bye-bye. And it becomes a much, much easier, more comfortable process because it's like the Wizard of Oz. When Toto pulled, pulled that curtain and Dorothy looked up goes, Hey, you're just a little old man. You're terrorizing people. You're scaring people. And she just, she totally called him on all his shit and like berated him. So all of a sudden, this terrified little girl, this petite little female, is literally belittling this man saying, Hey, what you're doing is wrong. And she's like pointing her finger at him and just like a teacher going, Nah, 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 and just like putting him in his place. So here's what I'm trying to say that leads to the next step is you begin to realize these people are not these big, powerful, godlike beings that they freaking had you out to believe, the illusion that they put in your mind. You start to realize like these people are terrified little pipsqueaks running around barking at people, like those little, little tiny dogs. They're all bark, they're no bite, and if they do bite, you just kick them in the teeth. 
So here what hap here's what happens. You start be you can deal with them better. You can see them, spot them, walk away faster, block them. Life becomes more enjoyable and it becomes easier to deal with them. Period. So now you are much more free to begin to notice people, notice the good, the bad, the right, the wrong, who's hurting you, who's not. And here's my point. You begin to see the good people, even if they have faults, like there's a guy I know very well, his name is Ron, well I don't know him very, very well, but I've known him off and on for years at this coffee shop and a whole group of people, they're all Christian by the way, and for the last seven, eight, maybe nine years, we've kind of like hung out for a long time, we sat through during, during the coronavirus because they shut everything down, but we were kind of slowly reconnecting, and you know, the guy's not perfect, he's not, you know, Adonis or nothing, and he's kind of got some social quirks, but he's a good person. And what I'm trying to tell you is you're going to start seeing good people and you're going to be able to see the difference between a narcissist and a normal, healthy person. And that's where she had like a sigh of relief. She's like, oh, because she couldn't tell the difference. And I know when I went through that, that really dark phase, I, I remember just, I would tell people like, I'm sorry, but I don't trust anyone. I would literally tell like, I don't trust anyone over and over to everyone there was this uh, lady young lady that was trying to basically pick up on me etc and i said you know miss you're gonna have to understand i right i'm not in a place right now i don't trust anyone and i explained them about the narcissist thing etc and people were like oh and they're like oh okay sorry to hear that so i literally thought for the rest of my life that's where i was going to be i didn't think i would that i would come out of the tunnel like wow life okay here's what i'm gonna say life is a lot more fun now a lot it's funner now than before i went through it so number one yes you will begin to tell the difference between the good and the bad it'll become obvious you'll catch it a lot faster number two there absolutely is an end game and here's what it is when you truly begin to, I don't want to say the beginning phase, but when you truly get to the part where you're just really healed of like 80% of the stuff, 90% of the stuff, life becomes fun again. And here's, here's what, okay, now here's what number two really is. This is when narcissists start to fade away. It's like your life shifts into a new dimension almost. It's like you're on a different timeline or something. And all of a sudden, they're just not a part of your life anymore. They're these little gnats that, literally, literally, just like if you go for a walk or bike, a bike ride and you get these little gnats you just flick them off it's no big deal it's it's it it almost becomes like they don't exist anymore because your whole way of being is you just don't deal with that kind of stuff you know it's like you notice it but it becomes almost like a semi unconscious thing where you just flick them off you just walk away you just something doesn't feel right now nah, just walk away because you don't feel guilty you don't feel like you've got to make people like you or make people happy what I'm saying is it becomes automatic. You just start walking away from the bad and you start walking towards the good. Something that you've always wanted in your life. It, that, is a, that is a part of this entire cycle. It's why I'm making all these videos to help you to see things from the other side, from the other perspective, so you can go, no shit. Yep, told you, it really wasn't that hard. Remember, narcissists want willing victims. They do not like when their victims fight back. They cannot deal with it. And if, you're, if you irritate them enough, they're going to be like, I'm out of here. Because they come to you so you're an easy victim that they can kick around, destroy, belittle. And also, then they want you to love them and treat them well and be compassionate and forgiving. No, you turn cold. No more love, no more forgiveness, no more compassion, boom. And eventually they're like, hmm, I'm not getting what I want around here. So they're going to have to go somewhere else. So here's the really cool thing about all of this. And I'm going to give you one more thing and I'm done. Is life becomes fun. So, he, so when you become a more verbally, socially powerful person, you can have the ability to say no. You realize someone's being rude, so you walk away. You have boundaries. You start to have and sense of inner strength, inner power, and self-respect. And I'm going to tell you something. It feels good. Now, this is the ending to all of this. 
So a few women in the past, about three, four months ago, I just mentioned like, hey, you know, I think I might add, you know, get back to posting my dating relationship coaching videos. Like, well, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. You know, like you can post, I'm not going to unsubscribe, but I'm not going to be listening, blah, 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 because I don't ever want to get into a relationship again. And that is exactly what the narcissist wants. Here's what's going on on a bigger level, on the worldwide level. I learned this back in Hawaii back in 1990, 91 during that five week training I keep talking about NLP, HUNA, energy healing, timeline therapy, uh, hypnosis training I took. One of the things they said is this there's an artery in the lower reptilian brain. If you are in a state of fear, so there's basically two words at the top of the paper. On the left, we'll put love, on the right side, we'll put fear. Under fear, you have anxiety, you have confusion, you have stress, you have gaslighting, you have all those things that narcissists do, shame, guilt, fear, all those things. Under love, you got peace, harmony, relaxation, calm, love, one, you know, wonderful. These are all emotions that open up the artery. All the things that narcissists do to stress you out, to cause fear, to cause anxiety, panic, etc., even confusion, all of those lower that artery. Now here's the point. The word love, the emotions of love open the artery. The emotions of fear close it. So here's the whole point. Just like that young lady, she's just like, I don't think I'll ever be in relationship because she's living in a state of fear. Her arteries lowered, okay? So here's how they control people on the planet. If they can constantly cause a series of things that happen, such as 9-11 and all these other things that they purposely do, the entire planet's going to be in a state of fear. So the electrical magnetic grid around the planet is of fear. And thus, the artery lowers. Now remember, when the artery is wide open, it allows a lot of blood to flow up into the larger human brain. And thus, you can see the bigger picture. You can see the tricks. You can see the manipulation. So you, you people talk about, you know, oh, I'm in a dark tunnel. I've got to come out of the tunnel. Well, I'm in consciousness. I'm, I'm awake. If you're awake, that artery is wide open. If you're not, it's asleep. And you are not helping the planet. If we can get enough people to wake up and be conscious, everyone else will wake up. That's the whole point of these videos. The more people learn, the more they're like, oh, I didn't know that. So here's the deal. Love opens up the artery and remember, it allows a lot of blood to flow up into the larger human brain because blood carries the number one and number two fuel sources for the brain and your muscles, glyc uh, glycogen and oxygen. So when there's a sensor on that, that artery that I keep talking about, it's an oxygen sensor. When it senses there's plenty of oxygen in your bloodstream, it opens up, it relaxes, your body relaxes, and your brain literally not only turns on, but it opens up. Now you have an open mind and you can understand things better, understand people better, and you can put the pieces of the puzzle together and you can see who's lying, who's manipulating, and who's not. The battle, the battle that's been going on for centuries, for thousands and thousands of years, all the way back to Jesus, the, the crucifixion before Jesus, Buddha, everything is about waking people up. If you are turning away from love, you are helping the demons keep control of this planet. And thus, they keep continuing the demonic stuff that they're doing to innocent people, to children. and on. I mean, I can go on and on and on. If you truly want to help the planet, you need to open up to love again. Now, here's the cool part. When you're in that narrow part and the arteries closed, your vision is narrow. So you're in danger. So if a lion is a half a mile away, you won't sense it. But if your artery is wide open and you're in peripheral vision and you're in what's called a periphery system, your ears, your hearing is peripheral, your eyes and your kinesthetic, your physical radar system expands out in a circle. This is something that I teach in my courses on how to actually do this on purpose. So a caveman couldn't survive unless he was in his right brain which is the system that I'm talking about, which is what this artery opens you up to. So if you are awake and you can literally feel or sense a dangerous animal, saber-toothed tiger or a lion or whatever, from half a mile to even a mile away. If you're walking through the forest, 
over to the right at an angle there might be a little deer and you wouldn't see it if you were in what's called foveal or tunnel vision. When you're in a state of fear, it lowers the artery, which means the blood goes from your brain down into your body and thus it turns off your larger hemispheres and you're functioning off of the reptilian brain. That's the lower brain and that's what narcissists want. That's what the demonic entities want so they can continue to hurt you and everyone around you. So the thought that I've got recently in the last probably 8-10 days is to literally put a course together to teach you guys. This is what I teach men in the Cracked Female Code course. Because when a man is conscious, when a man is internal, mentally, emotionally, and physically grounded, it attracts a woman to him. It helps his wife to calm down. Like he becomes her rock of Gibraltar. And so when she's going through her emotional hurricane that time of the month, she can cling to him knowing this guy understands that this is where she's at emotionally and it's okay for him to stay emotionally grounded because it helps her to be emotionally grounded as well. If you guys are interested in taking a course like this, and I prefer to do it in person, I'm, I'm in California, the Bay Area, I can travel, I can fly out to wherever, but I want to actually do a course where we've got 5, 10, a dozen, 20, 25 people. So I'm going to have to figure out how to put this together. Okay, let me know if you're interested in something like this because this that whole thing that I keep talking about with the artery, this is what the whole battle is about. The, the eye of the needle, the, the Garden of Eden, everything is, the eye of the needle is the lower, that lower artery. The Garden of Eden is when you open up to your right brain. All of the things that we've been learning for centuries, this is what it's all about. We are on the cusp of achieving the human goal from the very beginning, if you want, you could say of Genesis. The way you beat evil is love. It doesn't mean you have to be submissive because being submissive isn't love. Love is a very, very powerful place to be, a very powerful emotion, a very physically powerful state of being. And you know what? It feels good and it keeps you safe because you have a much greater awareness. Hey, this is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com. Go ahead and click subscribe, click the like button, make a comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video. God bless you all.